Hi, welcome to Wet Nets. I'm Matt Hayes. This is my fishing partner, Mick Brown, and you join us today on one of the meccas of British fly fishing. This is the Lower Itchin fishery, and the beautiful stream behind us is the River Itchin. And in case you're wondering, well, have they recruited a third member of the Wet Nets team? Let me introduce Lindsay Farmerlow. Now, Lindsay, your family actually owns this bit of the river and has done for some considerable time. What's that all about? It uh, all started by my grandfather in the 1950s when he managed to purchase uh, sections of the river at auction. He was an absolute fanatical salmon fisherman. That was his life. Right, Mark. And what about yourself? Do you fish? Trout fishing, um, I sort of started that a few years ago. Salmon fishing, I've got a lot to learn. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you what, Lindsay, take it from me. Salmon fishing is all about lots of fishing with very few fish, so I don't blame you. Now, you've been rather foolish enough to allow me and Brownie along here to just thrash around on your water. What sort of things might we expect to catch? There's plenty of brown trout in the river and salmon and grayling this time of year. And I do believe, Matt, you like your coarse fishing, so uh, we might allow you to... Uh, have a little dabble at that later on. Well, I was kind of hoping you might say that, Lindsay. Now, that's marvellous. Thank you very much. Well, this is classic chalk stream habitat. We're going to go and explore it very shortly. First of all, we need some tips, though, and you've got a river keeper here, Kevin, so we're going to go and try and root him out, and maybe he can point us in the right direction, Lindsay. Kevin. Hi. How are you getting on? Not, uh, not too good so far. I saw some fish rising from down by the bridge there. We'd probably put your fish down, yeah, actually, I, I think. <laughs> Listen, Mick and I were hoping that we might catch one or two grayling today. Have you got any tips that you could pass on to us? Yeah, I think what you want to try and do is start at the bottom of your beak. Um, very, very carefully and gently work your way upstream. Trying yeah. to spot a rising fish. And then, obviously, when you spot a rising fish, try and identify the flies coming, coming to. Um, and, and see if you can catch him on a dry. All right, well, that's the real way to catch him, isn't it? It is. What about fly choice? Because we're here on a chalk stream. I don't normally fish chalk streams, so right. I've got no idea. Well, I've got a few I can show you. So these are tr traditional chalk stream patterns. It's a grey duster, and it's a green wool's glory. If you find it's a little bit difficult, always try a red tag, which is... Uh, Anything with red in is good for a good for a grayling. Now, is there any chance of catching one of these ear flies off you, Kev? Yeah, sure. If Thank I try you. one of those, what do you reckon for Mick? Well, I reckon you try a green horse. Okay. Well, we're hedging our bets then, aren't we? Certainly now, are. is it okay if we carry on and sort of fish upstream? Yeah. Well, I've seen a few fish rising just ahead of me, so you're welcome to go and have a go. See if you can catch them. Wait, actually. All right. Thanks. We'll catch up with you later. Okay. Come on, Brownie. One up in the edge. Yeah, one there. There's fish going up here, Mick. See that one there, next yeah. to the bank? I'll, you want... I'll get into this next gap here. Go on, you have a go and I'll watch you for a minute. Well, what Mick's attempting to do is one of the toughest things in fishing, and that is to catch a fish on a dry fly. Now, to catch one of these grayling, you've got to convince it that your artificial fly is the real thing, that it's one of these flies that may be emerging from the water and taking off to the air. And at that point of emergence, they're actually struggling to get away in the surface film. But if Mick's gonna catch one of these fish, he's gotta get the fly to it as naturally as possible, not spook the fish, and to convince it that what it's seen is the real thing. And that is not easy, particularly, of course, on a very windy day like this one. I'm getting a right bloody mess here. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, the purists will never forgive me. I'm taking off the dry fly and I'm putting on a nymph. And the nymph is really the fly at the stage before it's reached the surface. And uh, some people say that's an easier way of catching trout and grayling, and it probably is to be truthful. But it does give me a chance to catch a fish. And what's more, I'll get a chance to catch a fish on this rod. Now this particular rod, it's one of my dad's old ones, and my dad's been a trout fisherman all his life, and you know, he never got to fish the itching. So I've said to him, Dad, give me one of your old rods, I'll take it down there and catch a fish for you. And here it is, my dad's old rod, repaired many, many times, and it's caught a lot of fish for him in the Midland rivers and lakes. Um, it really is going to be something special now if I can catch anything on it in the river itching. And a bit further up the river I've seen a lovely pool just by the road and I'm going to go up there with this nymph, just work it through and you never know. Yes. Hey, I've done it. Oh, lost it. Oh, dear. Sorry, Dad, I'll have another go. <laughs> hey, Matt, can I have the net? I've seen you brown, you're cheating. <laughs> That's not a dry fly on the end of your line, is it? Believe me, it was dry when I cast it in. <laughs> well, that's a nice brown trout. Oh, look at that. Look at the spots on that. Uh, wonderful. Cracking. Well, how about that? That's a beauty. Yeah. Full tail, gorgeous river itch in fish. Beautiful spots, golden belly. Beautiful. It has been rather tough on the dry fly though, hasn't it? Yeah, the rise has actually stopped, so we're just wandering around looking for fish, and uh, I guess the nymph is probably the way to go at the moment. Yeah, well, it didn't take long to catch one, so it proves they are feeding, but not... Not, not on the surface. Not on the surface, yeah. Beautiful fish, Mick. Shall we slip it back? Yeah. Isn't this a perfect habitat, Mick? You can see the chalk on the bottom below the fish. Let's just see if I can get it to swim out now. It looks well recovered. It's still in the mesh. I'm just going to turn him upside down. Yeah, it, it'll and do there well he that. goes, straight back to the bottom. What a wonderful environment, yeah. Mick. And you've got one on your dad's rod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'll be very pleased with that, I tell you. Fantastic. Yeah, this old rod still does the job, eh? Think of a better way to start the morning, Matt, can you? Fantastic. Look at that. Well, what a fantastic start, Mick. This pool's been very kind to you, hasn't it? It has, yeah. Super brown trout, look at that. Right. I can just hold it up and take a look at that, glistening in the sunshine. Well, that's a lovely start, isn't it? it certainly is. Look at the sunlight on its body. Yeah. Like all good fishermen, I'd worked out where I thought the fish would be feeding, and I thought they'd be just on the edge of that fast water. And I just worked the nymph round until it just dragged past and boom, took it. Lovely feeling. Oh, that's better. Oh, well, while Mick's playing around with those silly old trout, I'm after the truly wild fish of the river, the grayling. And uh, I'm using a, a 
a team of nymphs to do it. It's not strictly purist stuff, but there's no rise yet. Look at that beautiful fish against the waving fronds of weed. That's absolutely gorgeous. Freshly minted. Now there's some debate as to whether the grayling is uh, truly a game fish or not. At one time, ardent trout fishers disowned it actually. Uh, but now, with wild trout on serious decline, the old game fishermen seem to be trying to claim the grayling back. It is a game fish of course, it has the distinctive adipose fin. And uh, on a fly rod, these are truly, truly wild fish and they're becoming highly prized. Well, being the sort of restrained individual I am, I've taken time out from the fishing and left Brownie to, to carry on so I can talk to Kevin Luxon here, who's the keeper on the Low Rich in Fishery. Now, Kevin, you've got these two classic chalk streams down here. You've got the Test and the Itchin. They are very, very famous. What sort of state is the Itchin in at the moment? Yeah, quite, a, quite a healthy state, to be honest. Um, we, we're, we're seeing the, the, the salmon actually picking up. We had 131 fish this year. Uh, last year, we didn't have so many. So yeah, things are, are, are starting to pick up. Why is the salmon fishing working down here? Um, I think one of the reasons on, on the itching in particular, we, we tend to concentrate more on habitat enhancement work and the uh, gravel in the spawning beds, um, as opposed to um, a lot of rivers tend to introduce hatchery bred fish. One of the big issues at the moment is this business about catch and release of salmon, actually protecting future stocks. Is that something that you've got involved in? Yeah, we, we, we don't kill any salmon at all on the, on the itchin now. They're all returned um, and hopefully that is going to stand us in good stead for our future generation of anglers. So we know that there's salmon in here, but it's not just salmon fishing here on the itchin, is it? No, we, uh, we have brown trout, um, grayling and all species of coarse fish. Well, Kevin, I'd like to thank you for giving me the access to come and fish this river because it, it has been a wonderful experience. Great fly fishing. And I think I've rested long enough. I'm absolutely gagging to get back to the fishing. So let's go. to a really good fish down this run. I'm standing here among the watercress, not because I particularly want to be, but uh, I've hooked this fish over some dense cover and I've had to wade out to try and meet the fish. It's a really good bite actually, and this is a smashing fish. I think it's a big grayling. It's really fighting. The water's funneled through here on this narrow run. Oh, this is a beautiful grayling. He's up on the surface now. Now I've got my net somewhere behind me. I'm definitely going to need it for this one. This one isn't going to come out by hand. It's a clonking fish. Yes, sir, come on. The water pressure here is incredible. Yes, I've got him. Oh, that's a beauty. Oh, that's a lovely grayling. Fantastic. Look at that. Absolutely magnificent fish. Right, well the hook's out of the fish. I'm just going to give you a, a nice look at it. There it is. What an absolutely fabulous grayling. Probably every ounce of two pounds. It's a beauty. Fantastic. The fish is pretty good, I think. Yeah, there she goes, under the crest. Magic. <laughs> that was brilliant. Well, I've given up the nymph fishing now, and what I'm trying to do is to catch a fish on the dry fly. All of the fish in this river, the game fish that is, the uh, grayling and the trout, 
will actually rise to a fly on the surface. Now these flies can be either insects that are emerging from the bottom to actually fly off in the air or flies that are dying and literally falling onto the surface of the water. And the epitome of fly fishing is to catch a fish on the dry fly. That is the ultimate. And uh, having caught a few really nice grayling on nymphs, Although I'm not a purist, I must admit I would really love to catch one on a dry fly while I'm here on the River Itchen. Oh, that's brilliant! <laughs> I just rose one to the dry fly and I just blind cast into this area. I didn't see any fish rising. It's been a very sporadic fly hatch, but I put on a fly called a clink hammer. And this is a lovely, lively little fish. It's not a monster. And it is a grayling as well. You know, the clink hammer is a very interesting dry fly because it has the ability to raise both trout and grayling when there's nothing actually visibly rising. Here's the fish. Oh, that's magic. Now, that's not the biggest grayling I've caught. But to be honest, it is the most important because it fell to this dry fly. I'm really chuffed. Beautiful fish. It's just got electrifying colours when it's under the surface. There's the fly in his mouth. It's a, a parachute style fly and it basically imitates an emerging insect. The tail hangs down in the water and the parachute feathery bit at the top actually sticks up above the surface. Now the surface film is called the meniscus and to actually take to the air the flies have to break through the meniscus but often if it's thick they get trapped in there momentarily and that is the point at which they're most frequently taken by the fish. Now let's see if I can just unhook this fish in the water. That would be absolutely perfect. Just keep him down, plop, pop the fly out, there's the clink hammer, there's a beautiful grayling and look at that crystal clear water. Fantastic. Ah, I'm a happy man. Fantastic. Well, we're still here on the Lower Itchen Fishery and it's been pretty kind to us so far. We've enjoyed some fabulous fly fishing and uh, we've caught both trout and grayling and I actually managed to get one on a dry fly, Mick, which is what I really wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. And we're very lucky, actually, because the people here have given us permission to come and course fish this stretch. Now, we've got no idea what sort of course fish are here. There could be all sorts, like chub and, and dace and barbel, bream, anything, we just don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down river a little way, we're going to pick a couple of swims, and I think maybe we should give it a bit of a try, Mick. Mm, sounds good to me, Matt. Just dropped a bait in this hole, and I've managed to get a little winkle, a little chub out. Oh, it's a very little chub, but... It's not so much the size of the fish as the challenge of getting it out of this little little side carrier of the river itching. And it really is a lovely little fish. Probably never been caught and because there's not much coarse fishing done on this stretch, it'll probably never be caught again. Well, I am quite pleased with that because the conditions are against us. The, the carrier has collared up overnight and, and the water really is quite a chocolatey colour. And these chub are used to feeding in very clear water, so really today anything is a result, and I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Well, this is a lovely spot here on this bridge, and right over this deep pool on the river. Oh, that's interesting. That looks like a big dace, actually. I'm hoping it is. Lovely spot. I'll trot right the way down the crease. It's a big, deep pool here. Oh, that's a lovely dace. That's a proper dace, that one. Smashing fish. That is a classic dace. And of course, they are fish of the chalk streams. They grow very, very large here in the Itchen and on the test fish threatening the British record, which is only a pound and a quarter incidentally, and has been that way for a very, very long time. But that is a superb thick-bodied dace. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I 
really fighting. Well, that's a lovely grayling. Brownie's got the landing net, so I'm gonna have to do my best here. Incredible force of water coming here under this bridge. Oh, that's a beauty. Right. Oh, beautiful. Not quite as good as catching them on a fly, but good sport nonetheless. And they are a very popular species of fish for anglers who trot in the winter particularly. Come on. Oh. <laughs> oh well, that's the way to unhook them, I guess. Barbless hook, you see. Nice grading though, wasn't it? <coughs> gotcha. Gotcha, whatever you are. <laughs> Another little chub. Come on, it's only about a foot deep down there. No need for the landing net for this one. <laughs> well, they're real chunky little chub, these are. <laughs> Fabulous little fish. There's the rig, just a simple paternoster ledger. Oh, and this one looks like it's been stabbed by a cormorant. I know Kevin, the keeper, did say that they've had a lot of trouble with cormorants in the river, and there's, a, there's some evidence towards that. Well, again, a beautiful fish. They're obviously getting some good feeding here. Just look at the fat belly on this one. Pretty there won't be an evening rise. Yeah, it's a little bit mucky down the river with that rain. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for on this particular episode of Wet Nets. But we've had a fantastic time down here on the Low Ridge Fishery. We've caught our trout and grayling, of course, on the fly, and we even got to sample the coarse fishing. But now, well, we might even get an evening rise. You never know. But unfortunately, we've run out of time. We'll see you again next time on Wet Nets. One thing's for sure, Brownie and I, we're not going to stop fishing. We're carrying on. See you later. Bye.